episode of Triple D. So thanks for being uh, waiting for us from last week. Yep. So one of us decided to have a vacation. So, uh, you know, the, the little convention and all that <laughs> out, out west. So uh, we're glad that you're back with us, though, Steve. So and glad to be back with y'all viewing us uh, from your computer desk on your screen or from the couch on your television. Mm -hmm. So we're glad to be back with y'all as well. So And uh, we're thankful that Steve got a little bit of rest, too, I That's guess. That's right. Uh -huh. I enjoyed my time. I'm sure. I'm sure. It must be nice while some of us were in the trenches still over here back home. By so. design. By design, exactly. <laughs> well, that's what that's what I get paid to do. So I'm not complaining at all, of course. Love my job. So thank you all for being with us today. So we're going back to Chapter 10. We're looking at effectual calling still. Mm -hmm. So we're going section by section. So it's a little bit short of a chapter. There's only four chapters or subsections through here. Uh, so not too, too much to do. So we're going to go through all of Section 2 today. Last yep. time we split 1 into Part 1 and Part 2 because it's so long. This one's a little bit shorter and a little bit more to the point. So and There's a lot here. There is a lot to unpack here. So we're going to be doing a little bit of polemics, which is just a big word for we're going to be attacking others this time around. So uh, <laughs> which the door's in, locked. A, in a friendly way, we're going to be discussing some uh, other positions that uh, could arise from this that would be a problem, uh, biblically speaking. So let's jump into it then, okay. Steve, and we'll discuss what we have going on okay. here. So we read in section two, This effectual call is of God's free and special grace alone, not from anything at all foreseen in man who is altogether passive therein until being quickened and renewed by the Holy Spirit. He is thereby enabled to answer this call and to embrace the grace offered and conveyed in it. Now, remember what we discussed with effectual call, that this is the work of God's free grace, whereby uh, he calls us. So he calls us with an effectual call out of our sin and misery, enlightening our minds in the knowledge of Christ and renewing our wills. He doth persuade and enable us to embrace Jesus Christ freely offered to us in the gospel. I said that all without taking a breath as well. So I would have gotten a, a, a decent percentage on my, uh, my seminary exam. So... Steve, I'm going to ask you this. So let's do, let's discuss two different aspects of this. So we have what's here is the effectual call, and it's by special grace. Describe to me then the general call of common grace. Okay. The general call or common call is what goes out to all people. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus, and anyone can come. Mm -hmm. That's the general call. It goes out to everyone. When, and when you're in a church service on a Sunday morning or Sunday night, the, the call goes out to everyone is there. Mm -hmm. But that's the general call, but the, the effectual call is the call of God that goes out to his elect that is irresistible and the people will respond. The Holy Spirit works in our hearts, changes our hearts, changes our wonder, changes us where we then can see our need and we respond to it after the Holy Spirit has worked in us. We say, yes, I want to come Absolutely. and we come. He enables us to come. Enables and persuades. That word enables that and used. persuades, yeah. absolutely. So he's going to do that. The Holy Spirit alone does that. Mm -hmm. uh, the best preacher in the world can't save a person. Right. Uh, Spurgeon, who was one of the greatest preachers to walk the face of the earth, one of the, I mean, uh, an amazing preacher, and many were saved underneath his ministry. Yeah. But Charles Spurgeon and his words never saved one single person. The Holy Spirit used them to bring people to himself, but it was his saving grace, not just the common grace of hearing Spurgeon's words and editing. And Spurgeon even said, the elect are not walking around with a tattoo on their back saying, I'm one of the elect. Absolutely. So we don't know. So yeah. we, we, we give the call to everyone, the general call, but the elect will respond. And that's what we're called to do. Uh, if you're a hyper-Calvinist, is somebody who says they need to discern that you are elect first before they evangelize you. But that's unbiblical. Uh, and we don't believe that. We're Calvinists, yes, but we don't believe that. Uh, we're called to preach the gospel to whoever would hear, to everyone, to all of creation. Uh, Matthew 28 is very clear on that. But we also say that only the elect will come. That's right. That only those who are effectually called will come. So, Steve, and with this too, describe to me a little bit, because it's going to be uh, not from anything at all foreseen in man. Now, describe mm -hmm. what is the most common evangelical understanding of this with calling an election, or the Arminian view. Well, if you've grown up in churches in the United States, I would go so, fo so far as to say the majority view in this country is that, and people, even some of the pastors struggle with election and they think they have to justify it. Mm -hmm. They think they have to tie it in with our free, quote, free will. 
And so what many of the churches will say is God looks through time and he sees that I will make a decision for Christ so that I'm one of the elect because God looked down through time and saw that I would come to him. Mm. But we don't have to defend God. We don't have to defend the Lord. The, the Lord's very capable of defending that, and, it, and we, it's glorious news, not something that has to be defended. So the, the Bible doesn't say what I just, what I just said. Absolutely. The Bible says that God calls us and changes our hearts, and once he does that, we will come. Absolutely. And praise God for that. Because we wouldn't come on our own free yeah, will. Yeah, none of us would we come. We couldn't. The Bible yeah. is very clear that you can't do that. Ephesians 2, we're dead in our trespasses and mm-hmm. sins, and a dead man or a dead woman cannot believe because they're dead. Absolutely. They're not sick, they're dead. We've discussed that for a few weeks Absolutely. ago. Absolutely, and we're yeah. going to get at that again, too. So, Steve, does man then, building off of this and piggybacking, does man play an active part in the effectual call? Not active, because active then gives some credit to me, some credit to you, I can see, and I was wise enough to come to Jesus. You were not, Mm. so that builds me up. This is all for the glory of God, not for the glory of any of us. So if if we're dead, we cannot come. God does everything. God is active. God changes us. Then once we're changed, we have a a more passive part or an active part at that point to come. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, man is dead in his trespasses and sins. That's clearly biblical. It's in Ephesians 2. Uh, Man is dead, the spirit calls him, and then man responds in faith and repentance. So we're going to talk about that too in a minute. R.C. Sproul's famous dictum that he said was the biggest words that stuck with him, which was regeneration precedes faith. That That is a cornerstone of Reformed theology. So describe that too, Steve. What does it mean, Sproul's dictum, that regeneration precedes faith? Well, probably the majority view today is, I believe in Jesus, then I have faith. Okay, or I have faith at that point, I believe in Jesus. But if we're dead, we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit comes into our heart, gives us faith, Mm -hmm. then I believe in Jesus. So we're, we're, we're reversing what the Bible says. The Bible says faith comes first, because you gotta have faith before you believe. Yeah. So, yes, faith is a gift of God, Mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, again, that is a pivotal passage. We all need to read that one. Go read that today. Go home and read it today. Go home and read that. Please do if you haven't looked at it recently. So, yes, regeneration precedes faith. The Holy Spirit does a work in you through Mm -hmm. the effectual call, calls you, renews your will, changes Mm -hmm. your mind, and then gives you the faith that is necessary to believe and the repentance that is necessary to believe because those both are the works of the Holy Spirit as well. He enables us to do these things. Westminster and the scriptures are very clear on that. Mm-hmm. So regeneration precedes faith. You believe because the Spirit has done a work. Yes. Not because of anything inherent in yourself or because I had enough faith that I could believe the evidence. No, it's because the Spirit convinces us of these things. Right. The Spirit's the one who does the work. Uh, man is dead. A dead body does nothing but stink. He doesn't believe in anything. He just simply rots away. But the Spirit breathes life into our lungs and causes us to believe and to repent. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, Steve. So great stuff there. And I think that's very necessary, too, because in our, in our evangelical culture, we often get at the obverse. Well, I believe, therefore the Spirit works in me. And that's, yeah. that's not true. The Spirit works in us, causing us to believe. That's what the Reformed doctrine states uh, and what the biblical doctrine states So as let, well. let the Bible speak for itself. Absolutely. You absolutely. don't have to twist it. Just let the Bible speak for itself. What it says, it says. And that's what we should believe, and that's what we should teach. Absolutely. Going back to the Reformation, Scripture alone. Mm-hmm. We don't need anything but Scripture. Absolutely. Let the Bible teach for itself. Absolutely. So, Steve, let's go ahead and jump into okay. our proof text then. So I'm going to ask you to start with Romans chapter 9, 11. And sure. I want us to think about this. Any idea of that thinking through the corridors of time, yeah. you know, God looking through that and choosing me because I chose him, this totally nerfs any of that. It negates it. Go ahead and read that okay. and discuss it for a moment with us. For though the twins were not yet born and had done nothing good or bad, so that God's purpose according to his choice would stand, not because of works, but because of him who called. So notice God's purpose in unborn children. Mm, absolutely. 
So it is entirely a sovereign work of God in that, calling Esau and Jacob, or calling mm. Jacob and not Esau. It was his holy choice. So I'm going to skip over then to 2 Timothy 1 through 9, okay. 1 9. And we read here, 2 Timothy 1 9. Sorry, I lost my place for a second. Speaking of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. That is the effectual call. It is God who has called us with a holy call. Nothing in and of yourself or myself that merits this, but wholly because of grace. So, Steve, thinking about that too, turn over to 1 Corinthians 2.14. Okay. Would, please. But a man, natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Absolutely. So the state of man before the effectual call. Yeah. He does not understand the things of God, nor does he want to he understand want the things to. of God because they are enmity with his flesh. Absolutely. So turning over now to Ezekiel chapter 36, 27. Uh, so go to some Old Testament stuff here for a moment. And we read, this is the Lord speaking. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Notice that this is sovereignly done by God. I will cause you. So speaking to the children of Israel or speaking to his, uh, his people is the Lord who puts his spirit in you. It's the Lord who causes you to walk in faith and repentance. It's the Lord who causes you to do these good works. He is the sole first cause. There's nothing in and of yourself that merits this or allows his spirit to work in you. He does this, and even if he has to drag you kicking and screaming to make you into what he desires you to be, it's going to happen. That's the nature of the effectual call. But we're going to want that when the spirit works in us. And notice, you showed us that it's also an Old Testament doctrine. This isn't just a New Testament doctrine. This is an Old Testament but doctrine. That would be enough if it was just a New Testament. But we believe, we're whole Bible Christians. Absolutely. We believe in the whole Bible. And so what I'm glad you did that we just tied the Old Testament and the New Testament together. Exactly. They speak of one salvation and one mediator. Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, both called mm -hmm. by the Messiah. One was called by the coming Messiah. One is called by the come Messiah. Or the one who has come. So, and Steve, I think that's a great note to end this for okay. today. So, end us with Psalm chapter 27, verses 1 through 5. Okay. Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host can camp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent. He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. Hmm. The words of, of a regenerate man. Yeah. The natural man who has not experienced the effectual call could never say those words. Mm -hmm. He doesn't Good desire point. the Lord. He hates yeah. the Lord. But the regenerate man, such mm -hmm. as David here, loves the Lord. Yeah. And even in his sin, he calls out for mercy and to cause him to walk in the way of the Lord. And we pray that that's your call as well, mm -hmm. that you want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. You know, the eternal state is not just merely fishing or sitting around on clouds playing harps. It's worshiping our triune holy God and being united to Christ for all eternity, where we look into the face of the Master for end time upon end. And we pray that that's the desire of your heart, too. Well, thanks for being with us here on Triple D today. Tom uh, next time we're around, we're going to have a really interesting one. So we're going to be discussing <laughs> the elect nature of infants and the unelect nature of infants as well. So this is one that there's been a lot of ink spilled over. Uh, Steve's actually done a sermon or two on this topic. And uh, there's always a lot to discuss when it comes to this one. A lot of tensions can rage, too. They so can. This yeah. will be a really tough one, but by God's grace, we'll meet it and then answer it according to the Scriptures and according to the Westminster Confession. Thanks for being with us here this week on Triple D. Until next time, may God richly bless you and your families. Thanks for being with us today.